Hello, everybody. Uh, thanks for tuning in. This is the 12th in the series on more in the Geopath Insights Suite. Uh, my name is Brian um, in the uh, sort of marketing department here. Uh, in the room with me today, I have Dylan and Scott, who if you've been to one of these before, you've probably heard their voices. Uh, also in the room, we have Monica. She is our GIS manager. She heads up our relations with Esri, and we're going to talk about how that uh, comes into play in a little bit. Um, just a couple things. We have a, in, in the app, we have the question section. So if you have any questions along the way, please feel free to ask. Uh, we'll, we'll see those pop up. And we also have a section at the end where we're going to pause to take questions. So we're going to move into the agenda now. There we go. Uh, so we're going to start off and just talk a little bit about demographics and what that means and what they are, and then talk about geographic information systems and how we use them, why they're important. Then we're going to move into some of the new data sources and extended profiling capabilities that we're going to have available. And uh, Monica is going to take us through that and talk about some of the really exciting insights we have there. And then Dylan is going to bring it back together and uh, talk about some of the audience insights going forward and what the what the new demographic uh, data is going to allow us to do. So, what what are demographics? Uh, why are we talking about this today? Well, demographics there are ways of defining the population statistically, and currently with our measurement, uh, we have attributes such as age, gender, income, race, ethnicity, things like that. Um, and as we move to the Geopath Insights Suite, the, de the demographic data we have and the targeting capabilities are going to expand dramatically. Uh, we're no longer approaching things in the sense of general targeting. Uh, rather, we're going to focus on understanding consumers as people, their patterns, their preferences, attitudes, behaviors, and how they respond to different kinds of messaging and different kinds of media. Uh, and this, in in turn will allow the industry to be able to tell richer stories about people and understand people as more than just numbers or maps. So um, how are we going to get to that end goal? Well, we're moving beyond publicly available data such as Census and Department of Transportation data, and this is where our partnership with Esri comes into play. Uh, so Esri is the industry leader in geographic information systems. Uh, they make up 40% of the GIS software market worldwide, over a million users in 200 countries, and uh, they have an annual user conference in San Diego that draws 15,000 people. Uh, they're a really big force in the GIS world, and so our partnership with them is, is really important. So why is GIS important? Uh, it's, it's something that's become part of everyday, everyday life. Uh, you use it when you navigate yourself while driving or say you're walking around using a GPS to find a restaurant or a movie theater, anytime you use a GPS system, or even things like local weather reporting and checking the weather app on your phone in the morning. All of that is in conjunction with graphic, uh, geographic information systems. Uh, and it's, it's how we contextualize information, and there's a lot of it. Um, in fact, every day, 2.5 quintillion bytes of data are being generated. And 90% uh, of the data in the world today was created in the last two years. And a really large majority of that has a graphical location component to it. So why is this relevant to out of home? Uh, well, we use a lot of this today, but also going forward, there's, there's a lot of components that fit into how we're building the new system. Uh, we're we're going to use GIS to verify in inventory locations with latitudes and longitudes and just make sure things are where we think they are. But it also helps us understand traffic on the roadways and it creates a network of roadway information. All of that's stored within a GIS. And that's going to be, you know, across the U.S. that we're having that sort of understanding of roadways and movement on roadways. But additionally, and this is where this presentation sort of is going, uh, we need it to understand demographics of the individual, individuals on the roadways themselves. So who are these people? What are, what are they like? What do they like? What do they buy? Uh, there's a lot of data on that. And so that's, that's really what we're going to try to focus on today. So Monica is going to talk about that now. Thank you, Brian. 
So now that Brian has discussed the importance of GIS and how data is highly used in the out-of-home industry, we'll talk a little bit more. We'll discuss detailed audience profiling, which includes over 6,500 population variables and how they can really be of help for you as the user to help understand how to expand profiling for research studies. So ESRI gives us the capabilities to access several different database, data sets excuse me, in one place. As you can see here, we have demographics, consumer spending, business locations and summary, market potential, and tapestry segmentation data. As we continue our presentation, we'll talk about each one of these in a little bit more detail. So demographics. Um, demographic variables are based on characteristics of population. So what that entails is that, you know, there's a long list that's related to demographics. That list includes race, ethnicity, gender, age, education, profession, occupation, income level, marital status, and much more. And those are just a few that I've mentioned. So there are over 2,000 variables available at our fingertips um, within the ESRI application. So generally, the U.S. Census Bureau releases their data every 10 years. So their last data set was released in 2010. Um, again, we're in 2018, so we have a gap of eight, eight years. So the data, as you can see, it's probably not going to be of that much help compared to you know, data that was 10 years ago. So ESRI has given us the capability to see the current year estimates which is great because then we're able to get more of a general sense of, you know, a, a more accurate number, um, depending on which variable you're looking at. So here we have some examples listed for you, uh, for you to see how well demographics can really help you understand a particular area or even compare a variable within different um, areas. You know, for example, um, if you wanted to know the net worth of people that have more than $500,000 within the zip code of, you know, near where you live or within a county. So it's very easily accessible and you can under, you can get to know the data. The demographics data is updated annually for our usage. And here we have consumer, consumer spending data. Very informative topic that shows that the consumer spending data is it, it's generally based on expenditures, income, and demographic characteristics of consumers within the country. What that means is that, you know, ESRI holds a huge range of categories that include anywhere from apparel to financials to electronics to household furnishings. You know, again, just a couple that I'm mentioning out of the over 20 categories that we have, and we can look that up in any particular area. So here we've listed some exciting variables that are included within our consumer spending. For example, so let's say that you want to open up a Chick-fil-A location, um, you know, brand new location. So how would it be beneficial for you to use the consumer spending? So you can look up how many people spent over $200, $200 at a fast food drive-in in the last six months. So that might get you a better understanding of where you want to open up a location. So you, you're obviously going to target an area where people generally spend more versus spending less. So this is a very exciting area to kind of look out for any out-of-the-box variables for any research studies you might have or any questions you might have. Again, the consumer spending data is updated annually for our usage. So business locations and summary section within the ESRI application has over 13 million businesses listed. Not only does it have the businesses listed, but it also has details, including financial details tied to each of those locations. Number of employees, estimated sales, um, you know, where their locations are, how many locations they have. Very cool topic. So uh, one example that comes to mind that, that this might be very useful is, how many Whole Foods stores are there in the Baltimore CBSA? Very quick, very very easy variable for us to understand how many there are stores there are. So let's say you want to compare the sales between the Whole Foods stores in Baltimore versus um, the Whole Foods stores in Atlanta CBSA. This would be a great section for you to look at the estimated sales between those two CBSA locations. So, and here I know that you know we do have locations versus their estimate uh, their financial 
statuses, like their details. So the locations are uh, updated quarterly because we know that you know locate, um, businesses are closed or new business new business locations are open. And then the summary for them are updated annually for our usage. So here we have market potential. So market potential is defined uh, as the demand for a product or a service based on market and consumer information. Again, huge range of categories that include from goods to attitudes to activities. And one of the really neat things is that Esri ties up with, works with the GFK MRI data to help us, to help the user better understand these variables. So let's say, for example, if someone in your area was promoting, was wanting to promote uh, mobile or online banking, all they'd have to do, is they could, a good starting place would be to start looking at people that actually hate going to the bank. And it's, it's kind of a funny variable, but it's actually, in, on, a, on a serious note, that's actually a real variable that's located in the market potential um, section of the Esri application. And this is by far probably the most used seg section within our firm here at Geopath. And it's, it's, it's used very heavily and it's, it's a very beneficial section. Again, it's updated annually for our usage. Esri offers a proprietary product that is a set of exciting and helpful data set, which is known as the tapestry segmentation data. So what this means is that this data set helps classify neighborhoods based on a couple of different things, demographics, socioeconomic characteristics, lifestyle data, and again, much more. So some common ones that we can that we use and you can see to your right on the screen is affluences, generation times, common values. So there are 14 life mode groups in tapestry segmentation data, which then includes 67 segments within the 14 groups to help identify which groups will help you identify the user to which ones will be most necessary for your particular case study or research study or any, anything, any needs that you may have. For example, this data set can definitely be used for, to search for some, for, to search for a unique segment, let's say like um, soccer moms to upscale avenues to enterprising professionals. Again, you're, it's kind of out of the box thinking and it also kind of puts into perspective what you're looking for. And just to jump in, this is Scott. You know, so, sometimes when we this comes into play for us when we get requests from clients, a way to think about it is if you have a, a client that has predetermined personas or their own segmentation, sometimes you can use it to back in to find a proxy for them. Or even if you have a series of attributes, we can kind of use those to make them parallel to a, to a different one of these segments. That's one way we find when we, when we use them. But as Monica said, we often are using some of the other, the other variables a little bit more. Yep, exactly. So again, tapestry segmentation data. So Esri partners with a lot of different data sources to help provide this kind of data. And like Scott mentioned again, if there's a particular persona that you're looking at, this is a great area to come to to find what you're looking for. So here, as you can see, you see all 14 different life mode groups and then the 67 segments underneath. So whenever we do have a persona or an area of study that we have a request for, we start with the life mode groups and then we look into the segments to see which one's most applicable to you. And I'm gonna pass it off to Dylan to talk about, talk a little bit about our audience insights. Awesome. Thanks, Monica. Uh, thank you, Brian. Um, yeah, so this is a fantastic, and Scott, <laughs> uh, so this is a, a, a fantastic overview of just the different types of ways for Geopath members to be able to understand the audiences at any particular, or within any particular market. Now, understanding the market is one thing, but where we're really uh, putting all these pieces together and where it's just going to shine is when we start uh, putting this together at the individual uh, out of home asset location, that the individual billboard or transit shelter or transit station, talking about not just the audiences in the marketplace, but the people that are actually using those roadways um, at those particular times of day throughout the year. That's where this is all coming together. So, again, using a sort of an understanding of the 
uh, neighborhoods within a marketplace, these are areas of high concentration, I believe, of uh, the soccer mom demographic. And so we can actually now, with this data set that we are building, start looking at that population and where they actually are traveling throughout the day and which pieces of inventory are over and indexing for that particular demographic. Uh, in this example, we're using the Middleburg tapestry segmentation. Now, the segmentation stuff's uh, fantastic because it sort of has some nice bright colors already associated with it. Uh, good for um, sort of um, examples to talk about this, but we could use this for anything. We could use this for any of the thousands of the variables that we, we have within the, the Esri data resource that's connected to the audiences that are traveling on these roadways. So we could look at out-of-home assets that are over-indexing for people that hate play, going to the bank, hate going to the bank, <laughs> or uh, frequently play ping, ping, ping pong, or uh, people that own cats or dogs, or have feed their, their dogs uh, wet dog food versus dry dog food. Uh, it's a little uh, comical at times when you start realizing the the depth with which we can start understanding audiences for out of home, but it's incredibly important and really the reason why we've undergone such an overhaul of our, our process and our methodologies here to be able to connect all these dots together to have a much more uh, meaningful metric for the end users of out of home advertising themselves, the clients, because their needs are very specific and we want to make sure that we provide our members with the most flexible and most capable and precise measurement uh, for the full population as possible. And with that, um, we'll see if there's any questions. Yeah, we can pause here a moment and give people time to enter questions. But for me, I think what you said, Dylan, is really compelling. It's just not, it's interesting to know the demographics, but being able to tie that back to the inventory and understand composition of inventory based on some of these data points is I think really interesting for the industry and really compelling for the industry. And that's what I, whenever I, you know, I'm on the road talking about this, I'm always excited to talk about that aspect. Of it. So, um, so one question came up, when will this be available online? Excellent question. So in the next couple of months, we're going to be rolling out uh, versions of our new Geopath Insight Suite software to our members. Uh, we're going to be releasing it to individuals within uh, our member organizations and, and working with each individual organization on how they'd like to start distributing those, um, those credentials to be able to get access to these new tools. Uh, but in fact, today you can uh, email us at geekout.geopath.org if you'd like uh, an example of uh, or a report run or uh, information on any of these different variables. Uh, we'll make all that information available online for you to to contact us and we can help you put together some research materials perhaps uh, even today. Uh, so feel free to reach out to us. But yeah, in the next couple of weeks, next couple of months, there's going to be a lot of new capabilities rolling out and new software. So it's going to be sort of a, in, in parallel to our existing legacy system, these two systems running parallel for, uh, for quite some time. So we're excited about getting all these things in everyone's hands. Uh, one one other thing to just add to what Dylan's saying, a lot of data is available already on our in our Geek Out library. So if you don't have access to that, please email us and we can give you access to that. But we have full market profile reports on a number of the top uh, ZMAs. I think we have about 80 plus up there right now. Um, so there's another level of, of, of data as well there. But as Dylan said, we can go even deeper and map these out for you and uh, different things like that. So there's a number of questions that, that have come in. Uh, so let me just start to kind of pick them off a little bit. Um, question about the purchase data and where that comes from. Is it survey data or is it um, kind of from tracking the location of the device? And then is it survey data? Dan? It's survey data, yeah. The, the consumer information is coming from two major U.S resources uh, of um, well, what is it, a few million households across the country that are asking um, specific questions on different types of products that households are purchasing and stuff. Um, however, there are some other um, observed purchase information uh, products that are going into the tapestry data set that Monica was mentioning, that audience segmentation. There's some Experian data that goes into that to help further uh, define these sort of unique populations throughout the country. 
And that data set itself is actually used to help create lookalike modeling to be able to drill down to such a precise local neighborhood demographic. So pretty much all of these demographics that we've been talking about, we can drill down to a, a very local neighborhood level, all the way down to a, a local block group level, which is a few, a few hundred households. Um, just one other question on the uh, actually the tapestry segmentation. Um, basically, you know, person saying that this is available right now online on and Esri, and this is which is true. Um, but what are we doing? How are we adding to it to make it give us that value to it? And essentially, like, will will our members be able to use this data and see the different types of segments that drive by uh, inventory and on what roads they're on? And the answer is. Yes. Yes. I mean that that is that is the big the big um, value that GeoPath is is providing in this relationship is that yes the the Esri demographic data set is something that anyone can go out and license um, but what we are doing with it is connecting that with the trip database that we are building for the entire U.S. population so. Uh, yes, you could go out and you could use the Esri de uh, demographic data set right now to look at the population within a particular neighborhood within five miles of a retail location, perhaps. You know, that's one of the pretty straightforward use cases of it. What you cannot do in that data set today uh, outside of Geopath is understand the audiences that are actually using that roadway in relation to those particular demographic variables. So. What Geopath is going to be able to allow you to do is, of the 100,000 individuals that are driving on that street, uh, exactly how many of them fall into the laptops and lattes uh, audience segment, and what neighborhoods do they actually reside in? And so that's going to be uh, incredibly useful to be able to calculate audience metrics, doing reach and frequency within custom market geographies. Cool. Um, just to uh, take a couple more quick questions about um, the, will Esri demographic data be a replacement for the data we're currently using, which is uh, you know basically census data, et cetera, and just wanted just to confirm that I think the question is yes, yeah. I mean yeah we're we are, we're moving over to the Esri demographic data set as our as our new foundation. All of the existing cross tab capabilities of all of the uh, existing variables is as Monica was saying, age, gender, ethnicity, household income, um, and working status, those individual variables are still going to be available uh, in this in this new environment. So uh, none of the existing functionality is going away. It's, we're just adding on to it. Okay, great. Um, and just a question on the, um, will the data be available for full market plan regardless of out-of-home vendor or, you know, who will have access to this information in terms of numbers? And um, all GeoPath members will have access to this. All GeoPath audited inventory will be included in our our, our syndicated data product. Um, Non-audited, non-measured media. Um, obviously, we we don't have any control over that. So if there is a, a member that you work with, if you're on the buy side, uh, feel free to. Uh, Introduce them to us and see if you can get their inventory audited so it's all in the same playing field. And then the uh, last two questions are more functionality. Um, will this data be able to be exported in the maps? And which to answer is yes. We could currently do that for you now upon request. So if there is, as Dylan was saying earlier, if there's a population you need maps or have a question, can we, um, can we, uh, we can do that for you and, and export it as a, as a PDF or a, a JPEG file. And then um, one other question, just about, um, and we may, I don't know if we can even answer this yet, but will this, will we be allowed to kind of save sessions or, and you know, offload this information for later use or enter it in, uh, export it into a CSV file, those kinds of things, some of this data? Some of the data, yes. I mean, being able to create reports, um, being able to uh, create infographics from data, that's going to be part of the capability. Uh, you can't go in and, and download the entire demographic data set, but uh, it'll all be at your fingertips within the platform itself. And you'll be able to save um, plans, you'll be able to save projects uh, as, a, as a user within the software as well. So you can return, pick up your, pick up your work, share that with another individual within your organization, uh, things like that. Okay, great. 
Um, and I think I think that's about all the questions that I see here now. Um, just want to say thank you, everybody. And if you do have any additional questions, or if we didn't get to answer your questions specifically enough, please reach out to us at uh, geekout.tfs.org. And we'll be back in probably another couple of weeks with another topic. And we'll send you uh, through our newsletter. We'll update you on on that. Yeah. And. Um definitely can can hear in the, the tone of some of the questions. I know there's a lot of eager members out there. So stay tuned on our um, on our social media channels and also look for imminent uh, communications on our um, on our newsletters to get access to these new capabilities. All right. Thanks everyone.